futurist at futurist.com, researcher, keynote speaker, and author of Facing Our Futures, Nicholas Bamitton joins us on Canada Now for his first hit of the year. And because of that, how about some 2024 predictions? It's not as if, you know, you and all other futurists would have a crystal ball necessarily. Right. But still, we want to see what, uh, what you might think of the year to come. You know, uh, futurists, we speculate, we don't predict, but every year I kind of do some predictions. The things that are going to kind of gain pace in the next sort of 12 months, and I like to do that anyway, even though it irks some of my colleagues. But yeah, there's there's three things that I think are really going to be kicking into high gear. And the first one is around the simulation wrapping itself around us. Now, Explain. Simulate. What, 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 what do you mean? So do you mean? In, yeah. in the news, we've seen tons of stuff like 3D digital signage. And that's like the, the billboards, the electric billboards uh, that, that sort of uh, things jump out at you in Times Square. Oh, Japan, yeah. And a bunch of places. We've talked got, about that. Yeah. You've got these complex drone displays. We've kind of seen one of a dragon flying over Shanghai sky. We've got the Apple Vision Pro headset, which is going to take us into the world of like spatial computing, some are calling yeah, it. Yeah, but that's 3500 bucks. Like, Oh, it's we're more not than all, that. We're Canadian not dollars. That. It's going to be close to 5000 Canadian dollars. For oh, that, so. so that's not going to be like a, a mass thing that a lot of people are going to have, but is that going to be like a conduit into that kind of technology that's more in the norm? Uh, word on the street is that it's excellent, and it takes you really into scenes and whatever. And what's really interesting is – You've already got updates to to your modern iPhones and iPads and whatever that will let you do spatial video and spatial uh, um, photos as well. So I don't know. I don't. It'll be interesting to see how they make that work. But I'm more interested in like as we walk down the street, what are the things we're going to see. And then if you if you scoot over to Saudi Arabia, go to Riyadh, you've got something called the Mukab, which is 400 meters high and 400 meters uh, wide and 400 meters deep. It's got a 400-acre LED screen inside with a skyscraper in the middle, having all of these experiences. It, it's like people want to escape the world into some sort of new reality. You know, the metaverse is kind of over. It, it's old ideas of these pixelated uh, versions of ourselves. But that idea of, of a digital immersive environment is coming to the real world. And that's what I think is going to accelerate this year. Is it going to be tailored to, you know, because I'm thinking of like signage, right? You know, because we've talked before about how, you know, you're walking around with your phone and, you know, I'm walking down the street and there's a, a billboard sitting right there and it's going to adjust to uh, whoever is walking by. Right. So if I'm walking by, you know, being a, being a dude, maybe it's going to be about a shaving cream or something, or maybe right. it's going to pick up what I bought at the grocery store. Uh, the, the last time out. So no doubt there's going to be a big ad for Pop-Tarts. That's going to be there because <laughs> Jeff Sabbath just, just walked by. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it going to be that invasive? We we already live in a world that's that invasive. Your yeah. phone's listening in and custom serving apps. Yes. You. If you're on social media, you're you know you're plugged into the matrix. It's over, right? I mean, we live in an age where kids are born into a world without privacy. Uh, we're already there. It, it's uh, treading the line between like cool and, and creative and uh, igniting the imagination and downright creepy and surveillance based. Right. So mm. we, we have to work it out. I mean, we live in a surveillance society. We just need to work out how we can live in that without bleeding too much data. Mm. OK, so that's the world we're going to kind of be walking around. Yeah. And that's 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 one thing you're anticipating that you're speculating, not predicting that you're speculating yeah. is going to happen in 2024. What, do you, what sure. else you got? So we've seen all of this hype around generative AI and all of the platforms and definitely, definitely a lot of hype with chat GPT. We're actually going to see tons and tons of platforms coming into the realm in, in 2024. Uh, and, and what we're going to see is that we're going to stop talking about AI and generative AI, and it's going to just be there in the background of applications. We're already mm -hmm. seeing this uh, as being branded as something like Copilot within the realms of Microsoft's 365, right? Uh, so it's already going to be just helping us out, being an agent, being cool. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that you know, the people are going to stop, like, lauding the idea that this is going to change everything and whatever. It, it's it's like, did, you know, did the Flint Axe, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago change anything? Yes. It meant that we could chop down trees, we could, we could kill animals, we could uh, slaughter animals more easily. 
it's a modern day version of that. Um, you know, we're just slicing and dicing up work and doing things a little bit better. People are more productive and people are more, uh, they, they, they can get a higher throughput of work and they can complete work potentially with even higher quality using stuff like generative AI. But it also creates this group think and the diversity of thought is very, very worrying. So we're going to double back down into what it means to be human. Uh, and these are just going to be tools rather than suddenly, you know, 50% of an organization is going to lose its job to a uh, right. sort of thing, you know? Right. Well, we're staying with the subject of AI. I was talking about this on the show yesterday with uh, Lily Jamali of Marketplace Tech. And we were talking uh, about uh, AI as uh, as we see it on, um, you know, on, on social media. And yeah. our are we going to have the technology in place that's going to more make us aware of what we are seeing in terms of whether or not it is reality or it's made up? <laughs> we live in a world where we, we're, we're bending reality already. I mean, this comes back to the first sort of prediction I was talking around in terms of the simulation. You know, the, the, these pictures and these ads, this misinformation, it's everywhere these days. I mean, it's rife, right? If you're on social media, if you're in the news, just on the internet, you're rife with that so that, that misinformation. Um, it's really interesting. There are countries like Finland that are doing wide uh, levels of uh, education, you know, of adults of all ages and also kids at school to, to recognize misinformation and choose to filter that out and report it and whatever. That's where we need to be in this world because it's just going to get more complicated and it's going to get real funky with all of these elections coming up too. Yes, yes. In the US, India as well. So it's a, a big election year, not only in the US, yeah. but uh, around the world too. So we've really got to be careful with the, the technology that's out there. So what's the third thing? The third thing that you are speculating is going to happen in 2024. Okay, we're going to see a lot more FDA approval of companies growing meat in the laboratory environment, farm-free meats mm. and proteins. And it's not going to be a steak or a chicken breast or a chicken wing. The technology is kind of at the point where they can create slurries it sounds sexy, hey? They can create <laughs> slurries of cellular cellular protein, you know, and you can form that into patties, you can form that into ground beef, you can form that, I don't know, I guess you could put it in the shape of a chicken if you want, right? But it's not going to have that, like, solid protein, like, muscle um, sort of feeling about it. But we're going to start to see it come in. You know, I, I was in uh, Florida on Monday talking to 300 farmers about this, and you know, people that, that raise cattle. Two to three years to raise a cow. It costs, you know, hundreds of gallons of, uh, of of water, thousands of gallons of water, all that feed, you know, and it still takes a lot of effort to like squeeze the last bit of value from that that particular um, head of cattle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and what's interesting is if this technology can gain pace, they don't need to take much of the market to have a huge impact. The global protein market is about $7.2 trillion in size by 2050. You take 1% of that, that's a huge market. It's a huge, yeah. huge market. So, you know, it's, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Well, and it, it, interesting to see what kind of effect that's going to have on, on climate change and emissions too. Yeah, you know, it just everything, every little thing helps. <laughs> I actually exactly. Think, you know, as, as we move out of the age of fossil fuels, you know, in the next sort of 15 to 20 years, and we're starting to dial up with renewables and sustainability and starting to really get a grip on that situation, we're really going to start to see emissions go down. I mean, the world's going to continue getting warm, warmer for, for a while. So uh, we still got to buckle up, right, Jeff? But like, it, it's really interesting that every single thing that we can do and every single part of the industrial, you know, food process or water energy food, uh, if that can be revolutionized to be a little bit more sustainable and a little bit more clean and at an industrial scale, we can, we can really bring things back into some sort of manageable state in terms of emissions. That's going to be really great for the world. It, it badly needs it because 2023 was the hottest year on record. 2024 could be yeah. even hotter. Now, what about, because we've talked so much about EVs and yeah. uh, about self-driving cars uh, as well, what about the 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 auto industry and and what advances they might be making this year in terms of um, less cars on the road? You know, uh, car sharing and and yeah. on top of that, uh, um, going more green. I mean, we live in a strange world where we rate retail sales, including automobiles, as being a measure of the health of our economy, right? 
Mm. I mean, we're starting to really dislocate ourselves from that that idea. Do we need more cars on the road? No. Our, I think we look at the kids, right? Our kids getting their driving licenses, not as much as they used to. Do they want cars and are they going to be living in big cities? Well, they're not going to need cars in larger cities. We're going to have to get a grip on uh, on public transportation. So it'll be interesting. Again, a slow burn the next 15, 20 years. We're already seeing the EV technology has proven as being pretty great. I drive a plug-in hybrid electric. I think that that's going to be the thing that catches fire the next 10 years, uh, mostly because the batteries are smaller, but the range is smaller as well. But that range will serve you on a one, one to two day a week basis in a large city environment as well. So yeah. I, I I rarely fill up my 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 car with gasoline, right? So yeah. I, I think that's where we're going to see some, some real... Um, Real progress forward. I think that we're going to find that you know vehicle part manufacturers are going to struggle in that fifteen-year sort of time scale because suddenly you're going to have electric vehicles with three moving parts that never break down, right? So there's going to be huge disruption coming for these markets and uh, self-driving vehicles and the such. Like it's a funky time to be alive on the roads. Yeah, it's a, it, it's it's quite an adjustment. Now, 2024 is also going to see, and it, look, you and I are big Star Wars fans. Uh, I'd be remiss if I yeah, didn't yeah, mention yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. But uh, 2024 is, in fact, going to see the production of a new Star Wars movie, and it's going to be about uh, the Mandalorian. Yeah. So, uh, hey, what do you think about that? Because I thought the series ended on a good note. Uh, you know, I didn't think a movie was necessary, but being a big Star Wars fan, being a big Mandalorian fan, it certainly is welcome. I expected the Looney Tunes thing to come in at the end of that last Mandalorian. Right? <laughs> like, you, you got Grogu levitating a frog and the Mandalorian sat back with their foot, feet up, right? I, Mandalorian's fine. If we're talking about Star Wars, I'm like, it's Andor, man. Like, I'm waiting for Andor. That better I come know. out this year. I'm like, all in. We need more movies like Rogue One. Oh, Star yes, I just saw it again. I just saw it again like a week ago. And I always think of you yeah, when I see it because me it's, too. Really, it's our favorite Star Wars movie. I just I just watched both of them again. And I'm, ah, you know, the Andor season two is going to be that bridge between the two as well. We know that. The showrunners yeah. have already said. We got to be careful. We're blowing up the Star Wars universe to be very uh, prescribed and real and big. And the stories are sort of hitting the page and, and hitting the screens. And that's cool. But there's a lot of people that are mad about what, you know, how the law is changing and what's canon and what's not canon. I don't know. I kind of I kind of enjoyed the day when we had six films and, it, and it, you, could, you know, some books and some comics and we can let our minds run run free um, versus what happened with like the rise of Skywalker and some of that calamitous storytelling that happened. Uh, I some know, of it was I great know. and some of it wasn't great, but like, you know, controversial. I've just decided to let go and it is what it is. Enjoy what's out there. And you, you can't like everything though. I am, I, I am a pretty easy sell while well, I am looking forward to the Mandalorian, so, yeah. but uh, Ahsoka season two, uh, that is in fact, it's officially going to happen. I got to say, I was, I was pretty disappointed with Ahsoka. I didn't really care for the main characters. The highlight was seeing Hayden Christensen come back. Uh, as uh, as Anakin and as uh, Darth Vader as well, uh, so I don't know how I'm feeling about a season two, but I, I'm I'm hoping it can redeem itself from the first season because I I didn't really care for it too much. I thought the first season was fine. I watched it once. That's how much I liked it. And I watched that's, everything. I, I've watched times. it a couple. Of, I've watched it a couple of times. There's some cool stuff around. They they they're switching it up from space space wizards with, with swords, you know, into yeah. a more spiritual weird yeah. witch based realm ah, that was inevitable i think that's okay I, I mean i give it a solid seven out of ten i'd watch it again it's fine I, I thought the acting was pretty great in it i thought uh the ideas behind it i thought thrawn wasn't as threatening as he could no be. That was let, let, let's see let's see yeah. some real like terror on the galaxy coming forward jeff i want to see some like i want to see some real badness happen again yeah me too me too all right i, I well i was going to watch ahsoka Again, season yeah. one, that's inevitable, sure. but I'm definitely going to watch it because of your, uh, because of your endorsing uh, it. Chief Futurist at Futurist.com, researcher, keynote speaker, author of Facing Our Futures, Nicholas Bamington. Nick, appreciate it, pal. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jeff. Uh, may the force be with you and may you live a, a long, happy life in 2024 because 2025 is going to be a doozy.
Oh, okay. You can't leave. You can't have that low hanging fruit there. Fine. A conversation for another time, perhaps yep. a year from now. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate it, pal. See you later, Jeff.